What's up guys? We're back in the garden just as we are every day. We're doing science stuff. We have dangerous weather imminent. It's gonna be a fun night. I'm gonna be here giving you guys an update, letting you guys know what I'm up to. Stay tuned. So, being the highly motivated live wire that I am, I woke up at about three this morning, wondering what was gonna be going on. I had a frost warning for my county. So I've actually come out and put jugs on everything, which I didn't have enough. It takes a long time to accrue all these jugs. This is a good two or three months worth out of a re local restaurant here. I've also got one quart pots here. Um, I've never tried this before, but I've heard in a pinch it works and it seems like all of us that delve into horticulture immediately go out and buy these things and don't use them the first year. Um, I will be using them. It's just, uh, it didn't get scheduled out right this year just didn't have enough time kind of worried about the beans I don't know I'm assuming they'll be all right and well as for all the green you see here that's all cold weather crops so as long as it stays over 28 degrees tonight I really don't give a shit these jugs they'll hold in heat they'll be fine and honestly this is probably a good thing for them it sounds like the lows for the next week probably gonna kind of well tank a little bit this is going to really mess up the way I do my drip irrigation, but I think the way that the water actually, uh, for lack of better terms, propagates through the soil, I think I can just turn it on with the jugs next to everything anyway, and, well, the water's just going to seep in anyway. These things have, you know, excellent root systems already. We've taken advantage of the totipotency of the nightshade family, and uh, everything looks great. Um, I do think I have a tomatillo that's trying to put on a flower right now. I'm going to check it in about three days. If it is, well, I'm just going to clip it off because that's what I do with just about all this type of stuff. For the most part, I'm facing south here, and as you can see, I've got this great big tree right here. The fact of the matter is, I've got no reason to really get rid of it, but one thing I did notice is that and even if I stand in the shadow right here, it just seems like even with the ground temperature, it must be about 10 degrees cooler here because a good half of the day, this ground's not getting anything in terms of the solar heat that the sun provides. And so I've actually had to replant a lot of the sunflowers here. And I think honestly, in this middle section, I planted uh, their Mexican sunflowers and well, that I didn't get a single one of them to come up. You know, and between that and getting a little bit too crazy with my garden weasel, it just, I mean, <laughs> stuff like that happens. But hey, the Bells of Ireland are still doing great. I've got everything planted, and this is all perennial bee feed and uh, what else? It was bees, pollinators, and uh, there's one other type of mix that was in here. I can't quite remember. It's all just kind of perennial flowers. I was going to try and dedicate this all to... I'll cut flowers this year, but I'm still kind of building the ecosystem here. I mean, I don't even have compost in the ground yet, which is a little bit concerning, but I mean, alcohol has, eventually alcoholism stopped for me, so that's good. And all things considered, despite the fact that Mother Nature hasn't really been very nice to me this year, yeah, everything looks good, you know. At least I get to stand here and look at my gladiolus and my uh, very weather-beaten celosia here. It, uh... We had a windstorm here about a week ago, and it did not do very well, but eh, what do you do? There's uh, some tiny little coleus over here. You probably can't even really see it, but uh, there's one that's looking particularly haggard right now. I just need to get some growth out of these things. None of these plants have really experienced ground temperatures that were, you know, stable over 75 degrees yet, so it's hard really telling, but uh, thanks for tuning in, you know. Give me a like, give me a subscribe. Oh, and by the way, before we forget, I do have cucumbers coming up out of the ground. And uh, this next row here, that would be watermelons. And then I've got all sorts of squash and gourds and just crazy shit over there. So uh, that'll be fun. And just to prove I'm human too, this is the whole ass mess that I'm dealing with over here in my poppy patch. Uh, maybe this, this patch gets neglected specifically because it's really hard for me to reach with water over here right now. And that's because I just, well, I don't have 350 feet of hose. Um, I don't want all that hose. So 
I think what's gonna end up happening to this is I'm gonna pick through it and I'm gonna rescue the California poppies that you can't see in there because the weeds are just awful in here. But those will be fine. Um, probably plant marigolds as a cover crop until fall. And then I guess I'm gonna plant a lot of garlic in here or something, I don't know. Garlic, maybe something else. Just something that I can overwinter over here. Keep a live root in the ground. But, uh, well, I guess I'll quit boring you guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you've stuck with me this long, then uh, you're definitely helping out. It motivates me to keep on doing this. I don't get to do this a lot specifically because I'm so tied up with the actual goal of permaculture gardening here. So uh, hopefully we'll see you again in the next couple of weeks. Thanks, people.